Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to print spares for your Prusa printer. I've had a couple of messages and things like that where people are asking me, you know, where did you get those parts and how can I print them? What settings do I need? How do I slice them? So basically I'm going to address some of those questions today and hopefully get you printing your spares as quick as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the internet and go to this website. Uh, this is Prusa's website and this is their main page for their printable parts and upgrades. I'll leave a link below to save you a bit of time. So basically on this page, you want to search this list for your printer. Obviously they've split it up into kits and upgrades. So the parts for the kits and the upgrades will differ slightly because obviously they're different models fit in different uh, spec chassis and things like that. So find your printer and all you're going to want to do is click on the uh, STL button for wh whichever printer you have. So in my case, I have the Mark III. I'm gonna click that. And you'll sh you should see that it'll start downloading. And once it's downloaded, you wanna extract those files. So if we go to downloads, you wanna extract the files first, open the folder, and you'll see there's a couple of other folders inside. And uh, you wanna choose printed parts. And then you'll see another folder called STL. And this is the one we want so that we can import it into a slicer. And as you can see in this folder, you've got tons and tons of different parts. And they label pretty accurately as well. Uh, some are a bit hard to make out, but you can just open them in the slicer and see what's what. And if you built the kit, you'll recognize all the pieces anyway. If you didn't build the kit, it may be a bit trickier, but I'm sure you can work it out. So. Uh, one thing I want to cover before I show you how to import them is uh, on their website it's important to pay attention to this section here so these are the recommended print settings and it's critical that you follow these otherwise your prints will basically be obsolete and they won't be durable or useful for you because they'll melt so what you want to do is set your layer height to 0.2 millimeter which i'll show you in a sec don't worry um an infill of 20 percent and the most important bit here is that the material must be petg plastic um if you try and print some of these spares in pla uh, you're going to run into trouble very quickly uh, as soon as you fit the parts specifically going with the extruder so honestly you could probably get away with using PLA for some of the uh, chassis mounting parts, like, you know, the connectors, uh, the pieces that hold the motor to the frame, because they're not under any sort of temperature, um, environmental factors like temperature. So, in all honesty, though, I'd go with PTG for all of, all of the parts, um, mainly because PTG is harder plastic and it has a higher melting temperature which is why uh, for the extruder you need PETG because the extruder is the bit that gets hot, that's the bit that the plastic runs through and that's essentially the bit that that is the main part of the printer so uh, if you print that in PLA it will melt and then you will be truly buggered so uh, yep use PETG so I'll just show you uh, this is the PLA that came with the Prusa printer, you probably recognize it, and you can just see that it's uh, a generic, just PLA. It's Prusa, I, I'm pretty sure it's Prusa's own PLA. Uh, but when I bought PTG, so I bought some orange PTG, I didn't buy it directly from Prusa, I just bought a generic one. Uh, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. Some would argue that you get better print quality from the Prusa PLA. Um, I can't really comment on that yet because I haven't put it to the test. So I'll leave that up to you guys. Maybe if you already know, drop a comment and let me know. So as you can see, it's just a generic uh, PTG plastic. So it doesn't have to be the same color. That's quite an important thing to know. Uh, you might think because the printer's orange, you need orange. This is a slightly different orange to the one you can see 
on the print uh, on the printer. So I've got a box here of uh, all the different parts. So you can see in there, all those are the spares that I printed. So if I show you, um, I did show them in one of the other videos, but you can see these are some of the main parts of the printer, specifically the extruder. So the extruder has parts like this where you know the hot end of the printer is essentially housed in this so it's really important that it's strong and durable and some other little parts like these some of these can go that gives you access to the um uh the nozzle and the bit that feeds the uh, filament through um that's another piece that goes on top of the extruder you've got the extruder back plate so all of these pieces you need to print and you ultimately you want to have spares for them so what i'll do now is i'll show you how you can import those into slicer and how you can get printing so what you want to do then is open a slicer of your choice i'd recommend the slicer producer edition mainly because it's just built for the printer and it's, it's pretty much ready to go with plug and play so uh, I'll show you how to add a model. I'm not going to fully slice it. If you want to know how to go from importing all the way to printing, I did release a video last week on how to do that. So go check that out. And I talk you through each of the settings and why you need them. So, But for now, we're just going to click Add. And you want to go to that folder that we just downloaded with all, this, with all the parts in them. So again, printed parts, STL, and scroll through and have a little look so you can see here we've got extruder body so i'm going to click that and open it and what this will do is import it and place it on the plane in the 3d software so as you can see that is part of the extruder and you don't really need to do anything as you can rotate it if you really want to but it's designed to be printed this way up because it has um, more contact with the bed and it's just that's the way it's designed so the next thing uh, to remember is the print settings that we talked about so if we go back to the website you can see we need a 0.2 millimeter layer height and an infill of 20 percent so uh, in the print settings you can see 0.2 millimeter layer height which is the fast option and your filament now this is also important remember that we need PETG or you can just select PET for short so as I said I did not buy the Prusa PETG so I'm just going to select generic PET if you did buy the Prusa uh, PET what you can do is a bit further down you can see that it says Prusa PET or if you bought a separate brand that is in here select that but in my case the brand wasn't there and I just selected generic PET so you want to select your printer that should already be set up and remember on the website it said fill infill density 20% so you want to select that 20% and that's it so what we would do then is slice and what I'll do is slice uh, the model for you and give you a sort of example of how it'll print and from there then you'd export that to your sd card and print like normal and that's it that's basically how you print spares for your prusa printer okay so thanks for watching if you found this video helpful uh, please consider subscribing to my channel and that way you will see more content from me in the future uh, also leave a like if you enjoyed it that would help me out a lot it helps the channel grow and things like that so I really appreciate the support. If there's any other sort of tutorials that you're interested in, just drop a comment below. I do read the comments and uh, I'll get around to it if I can. So I've got a couple more things in the works. I'm also doing some time lapse videos. You might have seen one last week. I'm basically going to release a time lapse every Wednesday and an, a sort of tutorial video like this every Saturday. So I'm kind of on a schedule at the minute that I'm trying to stick to. I am trying to sort of jam some other videos and other tutorials in there as well. But for now, I'm just going to stick to that schedule. Uh, 
But yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you on the next video.